It's been one year since we released I Choose Hope, Eddie's story. How do you feel about that? Mike's production. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what's up, everybody? That's right. Look who it is. We got Mike and Eddie over here. How's everybody doing? It's the um, I Choose series. It's been a long time, right? It's been one year. It's been one year since we released I Choose Hope, Eddie's story. How do you feel about that? Mike's production. <laughs> yeah. I felt great about it. How do it's you feel good. about it? I still feel great about it. I know that there have been people who have been really, really touched by hearing um, your story, like your vulnerability and stuff. I know there's been a ton of people who have reached out to me. People have been showing the video in uh, high schools, high school classrooms, which has been awesome. Yeah. And, um, you know, we've been able to grow the whole I Choose platform pretty significantly, I would say, for a year. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, yeah, I think uh, the entire movement, you know, your I Choose lives and everything else, every, everything has just snowballed into an amazing thing. You got to totally. get back on it, man. I know, I know, I the, know. I, you know what? I have to apologize to everybody who's been keeping up and watching. I'm a little bit behind because I uh, recently moved, and so just getting settled has been has been a challenge for me. Yeah, well, it's been a challenge. Moving man. rough. Moving is is harder than I thought it was going to be. The well, that was fam. a choice that you needed to make. To uh, it, it was, it was no it. joke. I'm not even going to lie. Like this whole I choose series, like how we roll and everything. I knew that this was something that I had to do, and um, I'm super grateful. Yeah. Um, Super grateful. I mean, I think the whole movement is all about making that one choice that greatly impacts the rest of your life. And I can't think of, you know, a much bigger choice than, you know, packing up and moving your whole family. Out of state. Know, across the country. Across the country. So. From um, New York down south. Yeah. But that's what this is all about. So I'm happy for you. I'm proud Thanks, of you. Man. And Thank I you. can't wait to get this stuff going again. I know. Oh, I, I can't know. wait to see your face on the inside <laughs> lives again. I know a lot of people feel the same way, so <laughs> we miss you, Mike. We miss you. Well, Get back on the thank horse. You, thank you, thank you, thank <laughs> you. Tell everybody what's been going on. I mean, so, since, since, all right, first let me just put things into perspective. Yeah. When we released I Choose Hope, you were living in an apartment with your wife mm -hmm. um, and your one child. Okay. All right? Yeah. So that's where we were. Mm-hmm. Where are you now? That was one year ago? That was a year ago. Do you see how much has changed in a year? <laughs> how much has changed in crazy, a year, dude? Man. It's crazy. So we have since bought a house, um, a beautiful, you know, split ranch in the suburbs of Long Island. And, there it um, is. you know, business is booming. We had another baby, um, Cameron. He's awesome. He's four months old now. Um, so house baby. Oh, and then I thought it would be a good idea to get a puppy, a German shepherd puppy, a, a giant German shepherd puppy. That's the same age as my four month old baby. So Huge. I am an idiot. <laughs> Huge dog. I, I got to meet the dog her. tonight. I'm actually, I'm, I am so, the fact that I'm in New York right now and we released I Choose Hope over a year ago on September 20th. And today is the 22nd and we're together talking is just, I mean, again, it's just another blessing. Like I felt like when I knew I was coming and I had an opportunity to stay with you at your house tonight, I was like, man, we've got to do a Facebook live. Oh yeah. We well, have to. Yeah. We have to. Absolutely. You know, this is going to keep, get it rolling again. I know. We got to get, get it rolling, rolling again. again. Now that you're settled. I'm getting settled. I'm not settled. I have a dog, two kids and. I know, dude. A new house. Yeah. Now, for everyone who doesn't know, what do you, what kind of work do you do, Eddie? So I own a painting company. Um, we specialize in cabinet refinishing and sprayed finishes, and um, you know I employ five people, and um, we jump around from five to eight people, and we're all over the island, and uh, yeah, I love what I do. I mean, like like Mike was saying, I mean when he met me, I was living in a basement apartment, uh, just trying to get business up and running, and um, yeah, I mean, it's just been a blessing. I mean, it's been hard work. Every little bit of it's been a lot of hard work. But, I mean, just blessing upon blessing, you know, keep coming into my life. And it really just stems from making that one, you know, choice each day. Whatever that choice might be. 
Uh, but we're all faced with, you know, some type of choice in each day, whether it be, you know, whatever it's going to be. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I got to say, so from a year ago, from where I was to where I am today, like we released your video and I just, I just assumed at that moment as a filmmaker that like I was going to be able to do all the other I choose videos that I wanted to do. So my goal was I wanted to release yours and then I wanted to do a new video about a specific person making a choice like every month. Yeah. But that didn't, that didn't just happen, you know, it did not happen at all. In fact, what did come from it was the Facebook lives, which I never planned on doing, but the ability to meet all of the amazing people that we've had an opportunity. We've done over 20 plus episodes. Yeah. You know, well, life doesn't always quite turn out the way we think it's yeah, going to. It never does. Right. Man. But look what the Facebook lives, you know, totally. accomplished. And, and I can't imagine, you know, the people that it's affected and. Clearly, it's a beautiful thing, and it's something that really helps people. So, um, hey, that's yeah. just life, right? I love it. I love it. And even though we never plan on doing that, the fact that now we have the opportunity to speak with different people about different subjects, mm -hmm. not just substance abuse issues, but people who are suffering with all different kinds of things going on in their life, like, I've been... That kind of stuff, those conversations have changed me. Yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. And that was part of me making the decision to, to move. Like, that was a big choice, you know? And, I mean, my family, I'm New York through and through, you know? And to make that decision to actually sell our house, pick up, and move was like, it was a big choice. But I have to say that since I've made that choice, there have been so many doors that have opened up that I never anticipated. Never anticipated. Such like, amazing life. stuff. Yeah. Absolutely amazing stuff. You know, so, I mean, I'm coming from a real place of gratitude right now that I don't think I've felt, jeez, a know, long time, in a huh? long time, since I lived in Brooklyn, really. Wow. You know, yeah, a long well, time ago. We're really happy for you, Mike, and... Thanks, man. You know. I see Justin's watching. Justin. Justin, we gotta have you on. I, you know, there's a lot going on, man. I'm, I don't know if you want to talk about it or not, but we gotta, we gotta chat, man. Yeah, <laughs> time gotta to get make, on the show, Justin. We gotta make that happen, man. <laughs> Also, for anyone else who's been watching or who watches this on the rebroadcast, um, I totally want to open up the floor where if you are interested in sharing your story and you want to do a Facebook Live, we can set that up. I want to start setting them all up and I want to start booking once a week in October. So um, if anyone out there is interested or knows somebody who would be a good person for the show, I say, uh, you know, tag them or, or let us know who they are. We'll reach out. And, um, you know, we can keep going, keep going, changing lives. Yeah. And click that like button, that share button and subscribe. Isn't that what they say on the YouTube channels? I don't <laughs> on know. the YouTube? Click them. <laughs> <laughs> on the World Wide Webs. <laughs> well, we have, um, we have the I Choose Series Instagram. If you're not following us on Instagram, you guys can check us out. The I Choose Series Instagram page. We also have the I Choose Series podcast, huh? which we take the Facebook lives that we've done. And then we extract the audio and I kind of clean them up a little bit, and then we put out the, um, you know, the podcast. So if you're just going for a run, exercise in the morning or whatever, you can listen to. So far, I think I've uploaded up to 13 episodes um, from our lives, and every single one of them I've listened to again, and they're just incredible, you know? Oh, we got Jordan watching. Jordan is a new neighbor of mine. Awesome guy. Awesome guy. A lot of love, Jordan. I hope you're doing well. So what you're saying is you're going to be picking back up on the I Choose stuff. I have to, man. I mean, it's, it's my love, you know? Like, it's something that I've always, like, I don't know, man. It's just, I just think that it has so much potential and so much opportunity. And um, I think the, the, the most awesome part about it for me is the authenticity of the fact that I'm actually living it. Yeah. Like, I'm not just like, oh, let's start this and do this. Like, I'm actually living it. Like, I'm going and, like, I'm making certain choices in my life that are monumental big decisions, you know? So I'm not just like, oh, you know, people need to make good choices, but I'm actually living it. And I'm seeing the experiences and what I'm, what I'm going through is different than what other people are going through, but just the effects of those choices, the positive that's, you know, coming from that has just been incredible. Yeah, we're happy for you, Mike. Thanks, but man. we want you back. Let's do this thing again, man. <laughs> My Thursday nights have been been lonely. Should we keep doing them on Thursday nights or? I love Thursday nights. Thursday nights. I night choose. Yeah. yeah. I choose series eight o'clock, Thursday nights. I know we should definitely do that. Well, if you know somebody who would like to be on the show, please um, tag them, 
let us know. And um, man, I gotta say, if I may, since I've known you, I've known you for, has it been like five or six years now? It's about five, I would say, yeah. Five years, yeah. okay. So for anyone who doesn't know, I know you've seen just a glimpse of Eddie's life through what we were able to do together. But seeing the growth that you have made in your life, like on the real, like it is, it is inspiring, like absolutely inspiring, you know? And um, I didn't know you like before, you know, those four or five years. So I didn't know you when you were kind of like in the trenches, right? you know? Yeah. I only know the, the latter Eddie, you know, the after Eddie. And There's some people out there that know the old Eddie. The, the old Eddie? <laughs> they're out there. They're watching. Are they still fans? Oh, yeah. I hope so. I, I'm sure I lost some fans. <laughs> but there, there's people out there that know the old Eddie. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, I have to say, man, like, just watching you and seeing you grow to where we are now, sitting in your man cave, in your beautiful home, you know, you have your wife and your, your two children upstairs and a new puppy. I'm just like... Yeah. Damn, man, you got it going. It's crazy, yeah, man, and it all happened so fast. <laughs> That's what, I mean, you said one year, and I'm like, whoa, one year, man. That's a you lot happens that? in a year. So basically, what I mean, it's crazy what happens when you really just kind of just dig down deep and, and really, you know, apply yourself to whatever you're trying to to succeed in. Um, because when you do that, it it all just it all just happens. Like I, I I don't really feel like I've tried so hard. I just think I've shown up each and every day. And um, one day, you know, a lot of days strung together. It's just got me to where I am today. Yeah. Just making those choices. I mean, it's yeah. You know, you you know, hearing it come from your mouth, it sounds different than what I think in my head because that's I'm my own worst enemy even though I've achieved what I've achieved I can still lose gratitude on the daily I can still just you know not feel good enough which is crazy because obviously I am but sometimes you know that fear and that doubt creeps into here and and next thing you know you're just a lost person but thank god i have people like you thank god i have people like everybody up there who just continually you know remind me and thank god i put myself out there so that i can find out what's really going on inside of here what is it do you think it was do you think it's a vulnerability you think that's key i think vulnerability yeah i think it really is i think the more vulnerable you get the more you find out about yourself i mean i've found out since I found that out since day one when I walked in and said, I have a problem mm. and got vulnerable. Like, as soon as I did that, I mean, I started to find out things about myself. And and even today when I'm, you know, feeling ungrateful or whatever and I let somebody know, I find out a little bit more about myself, which in turn just promotes growth internally and, and then outwardly and gives me everything that I have today. And uh, it just gets me closer to God in, in general. Mm is that vulnerability it all really stems from that vulnerability and yeah. among other things you know? has spirituality or god or anything been something that's important to you in the process of course and of course because yeah. not everybody i think experiences that for me the spirituality is very very important in my life yeah. i don't think that everybody feels that um see i mean you got to you got to believe in something I, I don't you don't have i don't think you have to necessarily call it god uh but I think you got to believe in something. I mean, we named the I Choose, my I Choose, I Choose Hope because of what hope meant to me. And um, without hope, what what else do you really have? Because I've been in that place where I had no hope. Yeah. And I was, I was going to die. It wasn't until I really grabbed onto that hope that, you know, my, my, my entire life has changed. I mean... I don't know. It all stems spiritually for me, inwardly. I, yeah. You know. Yeah. So. No, for me, that's been important, too. And I think that for part of my own change and moving and picking up and changing our environment and changing everything about kind of, you know, my family life and where I was at, um, it definitely brought me closer spiritually oh, yeah. to God, for sure. I think it's something that's been present on my mind and on my heart, um, I think, more than it was... You know, when I was living here in New York. Yeah. You know? 
Well, I think the more you talk about it, and the more you open yourself up to the idea of God, the more you find out about God, and the more He reveals Himself. Um, I think some of us are just so afraid to talk about it, to talk like, like it's just such a ridiculous concept. But is it really? Like, yeah. is it really? I mean, what else is there? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's not a ridiculous concept at all. I mean, I've gone ups and downs just like any other relationship. But at this stage of the game, like, that's part of my desire is that I actually want to... My desire in my heart is I actually do want to get closer to that. Yeah. Whatever you want to call it. For me, it's God. I want to get closer to God, you know? And, um, and I have to say that even though... Like, I've been also vulnerable myself. So I'm starting to accept the things that I'm not. Uh-huh. I don't know uh, I don't know how that is for you but that's been a big change for me what do you mean accept the things that you're not like I have this idea of what a man needs to be what a man is and there are certain things about me that are not that are not that like I don't know how to do certain mm-hmm. things that I would that you would expect like oh you know that's that's a man thing you gotta do that and I'm becoming more and more comfortable with the fact of like hey there's some shit I'm not good at but then there's some shit I really, really good at. Yeah, I mean, and I'm okay with that. I mean, <laughs> acceptance is the answer to all of our problems yeah. today. I mean, I learned that early in, in Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous. And it's that acceptance that's going to give you that clarity and that freedom of self-doubt and self... Accepting who you are. Yeah. The good yeah. and the bad. Because who you are is who you are. Who you are is who You're you are. You're not escaping it. Nope. Nope. You can try and be somebody else... It's not gonna work. Yeah. I've tried. I've tried. Yeah. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I have tried to be somebody else, and it didn't <laughs> work. Yeah, yeah. So. I think that when you're trying to be somebody else, um, it's just a recipe for unhappiness. And I've been really, really asking myself the question, which I would have to say, if I, if I'm totally honest with you, like a year ago, I don't think I could answer this question honestly. When I said, like, what is it that really makes me happy? I don't know. Huh. Like, my work makes me happy. Like, as an artist, as a filmmaker, my work makes me happy. But, like, I know that the answer is supposed to be, like, my family. You know, but if I could be vulnerable and be honest, like, mm-hmm. I, I couldn't answer that honestly saying, like, well, this obviously makes me happy. Because I was really struggling with understanding what it was that made me happy. And then you think you're starting to find that? I think I'm starting to find that by being vulnerable, by accepting myself as who I am the good and the bad, I'm starting to like really find a sense of understanding of what like my happiness is. Mm. And now that I'm getting just a taste of that, I don't ever want to like try to be somebody I'm not. So what do you, you think that it was the vulnerability that's, that's... Vul- it's acceptance. Number one is accepting who I am and who I'm not. Mm. Not like this thing that I think I'm supposed to be, but like really understanding like Okay, Mike, like, hey, you're good at this, you're not good at that, like, that's okay. You know? Yeah. And just kind of accepting that and really, like, being okay with it has changed things for me, you know? And being honest with myself. Yeah, I think there's a lot to be learned by all of that, honestly. I mean, that that all has really gotten me going in here now. And, and that, I mean, ask yourself, are you really happy? Oh, yeah, totally. You know? Ask yourself. And not only that, but, like, if, if the answer is yes, then why? If the answer is no, well, then why not? You know? And so either way, it's, it has to take you in a direction which is going to go deeper. So for me, I can honestly say there was a long period of time where I couldn't, I couldn't answer that question of what made me happy. And then once I started accepting the good and the bad of who I was and not trying to be... Like, you know when you're hanging out with somebody? I'm not going to mention any names, but like you hang out with somebody... And you know they're telling you a story, and you know it's bullshit. Oh, you, oh, that guy. Yeah, no. you know who I'm we sorry? all we all know that guy. Yeah, and you know it's bullshit. Yeah. Now that person is trying to like beef up their story. Why? Because the story wasn't good enough. Because what? What is it? Right. Whatever it is, that person's mm. thinking that they need to overdo it, overdo it, overdo it. And I think we've all been there. We've all been there. We've all done that. We've all done that. Who's done that? I know I've done that too. So that's why I'm yeah. saying like I'm guilty. But of that. why? But why? You know, if, if, you know, just be honest with like who you are and mm. what's happening in your life. And man, man, that's a lot, there's a lot to be said about just understanding that about yourself and understanding what makes you tick. Yeah. And you don't find that out unless you get vulnerable and you talk to other people about it. So yeah. I love it. Yeah. That's the key too. 
finding out who you are, not just from yourself, but through other people. Mm. That's yeah. that's major league king. Mm. So anyway, well, we just wanted to do this, right? Yeah. We wanted to do this. It's been a whole year. And um, he I mean, lives across the country now. I live across the country now, but we're together tonight. And we got the family. We got both the family. families here. <laughs> both families we're bunkered down, bunkered down, rocking and rolling. Um, the kids everywhere were outnumbered. Kids everywhere were totally outnumbered. Yeah, that's nuts. Blessed, blessed. Well, anyway, I'm I'm super grateful that we got to spend this time together, and I'm so glad that we got to share it with the whole I Choose community. Yeah. So we're excited to have you back, man. Yeah, man, dude, I'm. Thanks for doing this, and thanks for just sharing your story, man, because it was your story that started this whole thing. Yeah, thanks for sharing my story. Yeah, dude. Rocked it. Yeah. Rocked it. All right. Well, it was nice seeing everybody, and uh, again, if you're interested in doing an I Choose Facebook Live, we would love, love, love to get them going again, so the sooner the better. Um, you guys shoot me a, what is it, a private message? Yeah, DM. A DM. Am I aging out? Yeah. Yeah, I'm aging out. DM. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Peace Bye, out, guys. everybody. Peace. Check you later.